Good morning, everyone. My name is Julie. You are watching this video either on my YouTube channel or my Facebook group, which are both called Lady Vialtai's Light Healing. I am the owner and founder of Lady Vialtai. I don't know if I said that. I guess it's going to be one of those days already. Um, I'm drinking coffee this morning. I don't usually drink coffee this early. up a little tired this morning. The joys of being uh, pre-menopausal. You never know what mornings are going to look like for you. It's like a guessing game of what's going to happen every day. <laughs> um, we're going to smudge real quick and then we're going to hop right in. Um, oh, there goes the dog. She's not staying today. Uh, let me grab my notes here because I did write a few notes. So we are going to be crafting um, sex honey today. Um, if you don't want to craft sex honey, you can title it uh, desire honey. You can create it passion honey. You can call it um, desire honey. Because um, the ingredients that we're going to put in it are things that would um, do all of those things. So, uh, this month we haven't done it yet, but we're going to be working on the root chakra. Um, I think, I don't even know what we're doing yet. I wrote it down. Anyway, never mind. I don't know where I was going with that. So, um, but Valentine's day, it's the month of love. Um, and so we're going to make a little sex honey. And like I said, if you don't want to call it sex honey, that's fine. You can call it desire honey or passion honey or create creative honey. Or you can just call it honey, I guess. <laughs> um, before we get started, uh, smudging. Okay. I'm going to smudge and then I'm going to try to recenter myself a little bit because apparently I'm all over the place this morning. I was running late so to get on here um as you can tell i'm a few minutes late um so i was kind of scattered to get that done but i really wanted a cup of coffee <laughs> this one gives me such a hard time it never wants to light all right there we go. I moved some stuff around on my desk here, my workspace, because I wanted to start using my smudge fan that I've made. This camera confuses me. So a little for you, a little for me. My nose is all stuffed up. I can still smell it, and I love the smell of it. I find people either really love the smell of it or they don't like it at all. And I, I love the smell of the herbs. Just gonna do a little Palio Santos here real quick. And again, just a little bit for you guys, a little bit for me. Mm. All right, smudging done. Okay. Kind of bring myself in and focus and center here for a second. The card we pulled on Monday for the week was Remembrance, and see, I'm backwards on this, and now I can't get it. I'll, I'll get used to it eventually, that it's backwards. You can't see that, though. And it's too far away. Well, I guess that's about the best you're going to get. Remembrance. And uh, so I have that up on the group. 
I thought it was a really good card with um, Mercury Retrograde coming on Sunday. All right. Sorry, messages popping up and distracting me. Some days I have that, you know, especially um, <laughs> being premenopausal. Days that I'm very, I call it squirrely. I'm just like, every little thing is like, what was that? All right. So, back to the sex honey here. Serious business. <laughs> um, it is kind of serious business, though. Intimacy is a, is a big part of most of our lives. So... Just a little bit about um, what the purpose is. Obviously, you know it's sex, honey. It's for sex. Um, but I'm going to cover a couple of things, and then we'll get into the crafting. So, um, honey is full of it's. I'm. I don't know if I'm saying it correctly, because I read most of this stuff, and I guess. Um, but it's B O R O N. So I'm guessing boron. Um, it is, um, the, it's from the bees. They collect it from the flowers and then it, it gets transferred, um, to the honey some way. I'm not exactly sure. I didn't get into like all the scientific, like things of the bees. Um, but it is known to boost testosterone and it's also known to, um, metabolize estrogen. So... That is why we use the honey in this, not just because it's sweet and it tastes good, but there is an actual reason why we use the honey in making sex honey. Obviously, if it wasn't honey, it would, wouldn't be called sex honey, it would be something else. But you get my point that there there is an actual reason why it's made with honey. Um, also, bees represent fertility. Uh, so if B is a spare animal for you, it's bringing in balance and enjoyment of life. Um, it's also no, known to bring in the sweet elixir of love. So that would be the honey again. So, um, so that's pretty much, I want to tell you why we use the honey. So, um, again, it's the boron and I, I don't know if i'm pronouncing that correctly it's spelled b-o-r-o-n um the bees bring it into the honey i don't know if they carry it in with them or if i don't know i don't know i didn't get into all the how it was actually in from the bees to the honey <laughs> um but again it boosts um testosterone and it metabolizes estrogen Okay, so with that being said, then, um, again, I don't know what's going on here today. I thought I was very well organized, but apparently I am not. I put up a list of the items that we're going to be using on the event. And so one of the things I said was a jar and a spoon. As you can see here, I have um, my fancy little jar. Now this is sex honey that I've already made, but you can see it's it's about halfway down, not quite halfway because the bottom the top's a little skinnier, but it's part way down. And um, I only do have a little teeny bit of my. Um, my local honey it's just a little bit left so instead of making a new jar I'm gonna go ahead and add to this jar which is certainly something you can do um, when your honey starts to get low uh, you don't have to wait till it's done and make a new jar or you don't have to start a different jar you can just keep adding to the same jar 
Honey is a preservative, so um, it's not going to get moldy. Um, it's not going to go bad as long as it's, you know, it's got a cover on it and, and it's not exposed to it like a lot of air. Um, so you can just keep adding to the same jar for however long you want. At some point, I'll wash it just because um, that's why I have this little um, plate under it because it's dripped down and I can't. <laughs> yeah. So at some point, I'll empty it and just give it a little bath, um, wash it off. But you could, I could just wash the outside if I wanted and continue to use the inside. Basically, where I was going with that is you don't need to worry about using it all up really fast because it's going to go bad. Um, or, you know, like, do I have to use it in a month or two months or three months? It will will stay good as long as it's got a, a cover on it. Um, mine though is getting sticky. <laughs> so it has started to get thick. But that is because, um, well, part of it is because I use local honey. So it's not quite the same kind of a, is the honey that comes from the store, which is very, I call it maple syrupy, syrupy, like it's a very thin, you know, fluid kind of syrup. You can certainly use the maple syrup, um, the maple syrup, the honey from the grocery store. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Um, the only thing that I suggest when you're buying it in the grocery store is you actually look at the bottle because some of them, even though they're in the bear, that that's the honey bear, it actually says honey flavored syrup. So I wouldn't suggest that. I don't know how the lifespan is on that because um, I don't think it's really honey. Um, so if you want to buy honey from the grocery store, um, just be aware of that. I've also bought when I when I run out of my honey from my cousin from her bees, I usually order mine on Amazon because I make sure it's a hundred percent organic, um, and it's you know from anyway. I'm squirreling today. I apologize. But on Amazon, you do have to be a little careful because sometimes the honey you get on there actually comes in a solid. It will be in a jar, um, but it it's comes solid. Like mine is pretty thick. See, it doesn't really move much when you tilt the jar. Versus this one when you tilt it, you know, it moves pretty quickly. Um, but yes, that's why my jar is quite thick. But sometimes when you when you do order on Amazon and you order raw, natural, 100% organic honey, sometimes it can come in a solid form, which is still fine if you're going to use it in teas or cooking or on toast or any of those other things. It's just not going to work very well for this. So, um, if you get it and it's, it's more of a solid, you know, it doesn't mean it's not any good. Uh, it's just not going to be very good for, if you want to use it for making sex honey. So, <sighs> removing the lid. And so let's see here. So I said you should have a jar and a spoon. I have my little wand thing and my honey, but I do have a nice long spoon because my jar is a big jar. Um, I said rose, lavender, and cardamom, and I put all of those to be organic because you are going to eat this. Um, so you don't want to, we've talked about this before, um, I, I try to uh, reuse as many things as possible. 
So right now, like at Valentine's Day, if a lot of you are getting roses from um, the florist for Valentine's Day, I would certainly repurpose those flowers. Once they've gone past their date of being pretty and they start to get droopy or the petals start to fall off, I would, I would um, hang them upside down to dry and then I would pluck the petals off and um, reuse them. Or you could take the whole bud off, take the whole flower piece off if you wanted to make some sort of dried flower arrangement with them. Um, but those would not be ones that you would want to use in anything that's going to be edible or, and I suggest not using them in your bathtub because a lot of times you can take crushed rose petals and put them in your bathtub, but you really never know what they're going to have been sprayed with at the florist or what they may have put in the water to preserve them. Um, so I just recommend staying away from using those flowers. They're really great if you want to use them. Um, I just crush them up and put them on my charcoal discs and burn them as an incense in the house. But yeah, if you're gonna use them as something that is edible or a skin, you know, a bath salt or uh, putting them in the bath or teas or anything like that, I wouldn't recommend using the ones um, from the florist just because you don't really, like I said, you don't really know what they're sprayed with. So um, I have, a, I tried to pull out as much stuff as I have here so you can see the difference of things. Um, this was actually a kit that we bought, so, or I bought. Um, so there is my organic rose petals in there. And again, you can't see them great, but there's the rose petals. But I wanted to also show you, I have it this way. So this is a very powdery form. Now, even though this is the one that came in, in the kit that I did, and that's what's in my jar right now. I'm actually going to use the powder because to me, the powder is going to mix in with the honey a little bit better. The, the, the rose petals in the honey is certainly gonna, they're gonna infuse together over time, but I'm gonna use my powder today. Or maybe I'll use a little bit of both just so you can see. And while I'm doing that, I'll go over Rose. So Rose is um, to be lucky in love. Uh, it's for good fortune and it's good for happiness. But it's also known that um, roses are also an aphrodisiac. Um, the smell of roses, so... Um, if you've got an incense burner or even one of those Scentsy burners or anything in, in your room um, and you want a little private time, um, burn some rose in your bedroom. You can also make, there's all kinds of things you can do. You can make um, some rose um, sprays. I, I make this, the spritz that you can spray in the room. Um, I have one that's a clearing spray that I spray on my bed, um, but it's also got um, things in it that are really um, good for breathing. And my, and my husband and I both have um, this head cold right now, so it's doubling as spraying for um, helping us breathe at night. But I can make something like that. Um, I have one that's called Love, and I have one that's called Desire. Um, and I have the prices all on the group page, the Facebook group page, it's pinned up in the announcements. So all of the different blends that I make, um, I did have one out here, but, oh yeah, it's right here. Side tracking again. This is uh, the Roller Perfume. Morning, Mom. This is the Roller Perfume for Love, but I also do have one for Desire. And the prices are all up there. This is a little roller bottle. Just roll it on. But if 
you, I find this is the easiest to use, the roller bottles, but I do have it, like I said, in a spray bottle, which I should have one out here to show you, but I don't. I have a spray bottle. Um, I have just like a little dropper bottle like this. My bottles are all blue, but um, I have a dropper bottle like this. So if you wanted to use this, this is really great if you want to drop it in the bathtub or if you want to use it as a beard oil, um, if you want to put it on an incense. So it's just nice because this kind of bottle comes with a little dropper. You can pretty much use it however you want. I can do it in a bath scrub. I can do it in a body lotion. Um, all you have to do is just let me know. Um, I stopped making up a bunch of stock ahead just because I have stock sitting around. Um, so now I've kind of gone more towards if you want something, let me know. And I can, it, I can literally make it up in a day or two for you. So back to the rose petals. So they're, um, like I said, they're uh, lucky in love, good fortune, happiness, but um, they're also um, the smell of them and the essence of them are aphrodisiacs. Yeah. So I have two different forms of the organic. And then we are going to do lavender. And again, so there is more of the herb between the camera and the light. Trying to get it so you can see it. So those are little um, lavender pods. I don't know if that's technically what they're called, but the little petals. And again, it says organic on there. Or I also have the organic powder. It's very fine powder. And there's no right or wrong way. Like I said, I would just really highly recommend that where it's going in the honey that you use organic and not something that you got from the flower shop. I wouldn't even like, I say flower shop, but I'm like, I know this time of year Shaw's is selling lots of flowers and stuff. I wouldn't use anything like that either for this because again, those are all going to have been sprayed with preservatives or put in water with preservatives or something so um i wouldn't recommend using those um, either you can buy them from um, herbal shops or you can buy them online um, or if we're good in the summertime when the roses start to go by we can collect them ourselves <laughs> from our backyard. Lavender is relaxing, calming, and peaceful. So um, it kind of helps bring down that anxiety, stress, um, helps you just relax, be in the moment, be calm. And then the other one is um, cardamom. And um, I didn't have any more of the ones that came in the little packet, so I bought some. Um, I put my own sticker on it so I could remember what it is. But I got this from an herbal um, metaphysical shop over in Littleton. And so they have a really great selection of all kinds of herbs. So if you're looking for something um, and you're local to where I am, you can go to Littleton and go down, um, it's the street behind Main Street, um, where like the bookstore and Shillings and stuff is, that little back street, I don't, can't think of the name of it right now, but it's called um, Deep, Deep Earth Arts. Go see Isaac or Josh, they're amazing, they will help you. I think it's usually Isaac that's there, but um, they are really great, they will help you find anything you need. And if Isaac doesn't have it, he can probably tell you where to go to get it. <laughs> so cardamom is good for your heart chakra. Um, it's good to be, uh, it's good for being just in a natural state of love. It brings in comfort and security. And it's an aphrodisiac as well. 
So, and all of these things, you can not only put them in the honey, but like I said, you could put them on a charcoal disc and burn them. You could um, just sprinkle all of these in a bathtub and, and take a, a bath. Uh, there's lots of different things you can do besides the honey. The reason, like I said, the reason that we use the honey is because of um, the boron, and I apologize if I'm not saying that correctly, um, which is to boost your testosterone and metabolize the estrogen. So that's the part the honey is playing. So, so with all the technical stuff here done, I'm gonna move the camera down. This isn't gonna take a whole long time. Uh, it's pretty easy to mix. Um, and then um, I got a few other little things I wanted to go over with you for um, things that could put you in a romantic valentine mood if you so choose. So let me move the camera down. There. You see all right? I got dog hair on me already. I just got up and got dressed. That one's my hair. All right. So we have our little jar. And yeah, mine looks a little goopy, but it is because it's goopy. Um, it's very thick right now. But like I said, mine is a, a local honey. So it doesn't have any additive or preservatives or anything in it. So you're going to have your jar and... I like, there's probably an herb spoon somewhere out there you can buy, but I bought these little spoons from Pampered Chef. I got a three pack for, I don't know, the lady sold them to me for five bucks. I don't think that was the price, but that's what she sold them to me for. I got three spoons for five bucks. Um, let's clean it off here because... I don't know what I used it for last, but <laughs> all my stuff is organic and all my stuff is pretty safe to eat using a tea or, um, but not everything always tastes so great. So I'm not sure what I used the spoon for last, but, um, just because I like the spoon because it's hard to get in these little bags sometimes. And... So when you're going to craft something like this, my suggestion is, and I know everybody wants to know how much do I put in? And really, um, my thing is that I tell everybody is use your intuition. Um, start to try to trust that intuition um, and just go with what you feel is right. Um, and it's not necessarily using more is going to make it stronger or better. So I usually just use a little bit, and then as my honey gets low, I add some more. So instead of just adding more honey to this, when I, when I refill this, which is what I'm doing today, is I'm going to add a little bit more of all of my stuff and add a little bit more honey. And then as it gets used down again, I'll repeat that. So I'll add a little more honey, and I'll add a little bit more um, of the herbs and stuff, because when I use this... I do eat, um, you know, the, the, there's a huge cardamom pop right there. Um, so when I first made this honey, I'll see if I can get it back up here. Probably not. Nope, of course not. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. There we go. Maybe I got it this time. So if you can see right there, I don't want to move it close to the camera because it's going to drip everywhere. But there's a huge... Um, getting sticky here there's this huge pod this is what a cardamom pod looks like and um, I have I had used all my pods to go in the honey one thing I will recommend when you're crafty, dollar store <laughs> wipes are always 
really handy. <laughs> I do leave them right here on my desk or my little shelf because most of my crafting is messy, especially when you're working with oils as well. My suggestion though, if you are working with oils and you get oils on your fingers, is to actually put them in the ends of your hair. Um, your hair will thank you for it. But I don't recommend putting honey in your hair unless you want to be sticky all day. So it, your jar is going to be empty right now, I'm assuming. And so um, what I do is I just take basically what will fit on my spoon and just put it in the jar. Yeah, it's not really rocket science. It's pretty easy. And then I'm going to repeat the same thing with my powder. Probably not going to use a whole spoonful of the powder. Um, but again, rose, <coughs> sorry, is good for um, being lucky in love. It is good for um, good fortune. It's good for happiness. And it is a natural aphrodisiac. So again, I just have a little teeny bit on there. I don't. I don't want it to be too powdery, especially because my honey is already really quite thick. I don't want to make it too, too powdery. Then I'm going to repeat with my lavender, which again is good for relaxing, calming, um, bringing in a state of peacefulness. Again, just just what fits on my spoon in there. <coughs> Everybody at my office has been really sick. I thankfully, knock on wood, have not been really sick, but I got the head cold part of it. And it's just kind of, for me, it usually just lingers. I will have this yucky voice and stuffed up nose for probably weeks where everybody else just got really sick for like three or four days. I'm going to just be semi sick for weeks instead. Again, just a little teeny bit on the spoon. Um, not much at all. Like I said, it's not necessarily the more you put in, the better it's going to work. But if you have a really large jar, and you want to, you know, fill it right up, you could certainly dump the whole bag of rose petals in there. You could dump the whole bag of lavender in there. You could dump the whole thing of cardamom in there. And you, or if this was full and I wanted to use this jar, say the honey was like up to, the honey was like up to here. Camera issues backwards throws me off. So if you say your honey was all the way up to here and you just wanted to add in all your ingredients right into this jar, you could certainly just do that. And then you'd probably want to add a little bit more because it's quite a bit of honey. But again, just use your intuition and go with what feels right. And so my little jar of cardamom. And again, not even quite using a full spoon on that. Um, pretty close, but not quite. I need to buy some, um, these are just like address labels and they are not made for jars and they don't stick well. So I need to buy some new labels. Um, before I add my honey, I'm not going to add anything else besides my honey, but I wanted to go over. I do have a list of things. I'm going to put the camera back up for a second. I do have a list of other items that you can put in there if you want. So if you've got these in your house, crazy hair. Um, if you've got these things in your house or you want to, add them. Um, and you could certainly put in your honey 
and then go back and back and add any of these things at any time. You don't have to just do it all at the same time. You can certainly at any point open up your jar, add more honey, open up your jar, add more rose petals, open up your jar and add any of these other items that I'm going to go over with you. So, um, again, really just go by your instinct, your intuition, uh, trust that if, um, you're thinking of adding something, go ahead and add it. Cause nine out of 10 times when people say, can I use this instead of this? Or can I put this in? Chances are, if it's in your mind and you're asking it, that's your intuition working. And so most of the time, unless it's something that's not good to be ingested, <clears throat> I will tell you, if that's what your intuition is telling you, then yeah, go ahead and put it in there. You know, so, and again, it's a lot about intention as well. So if there's something that represents um, love or desire to you and you want to put it in there, go ahead and put it in there. Some people um, relate chocolate as a desire, a passion. Um, I, I love chocolate. Um, like I don't go very many days without chocolate. I have a desire for chocolate. So if I wanted to put a little bit of um, cacao powder in there, you could certainly do that. Um, so again, you can certainly trust your intuition and, and make it your own at the same time. But some of the things <clears throat> I wanted to go over with you real quick that you could put in here if you wanted. These are things that you can buy at your grocery store. You could buy at an herbal store. I did go on Amazon and all of these things can be bought on Amazon because I wanted to make sure that before I told you guys to put something in there that there was actually a way for you to get it. So if you can't get it at the grocery store, you can't get it at an herbal store. Um, a lot of times if you've got a tea store, you could probably find most of that stuff in a tea store. Um, but again, I did double check. All of these items are on Amazon. So you can get them all from there. Um, and I didn't go really into the properties of every single one of them. Just know that the properties of these are somehow an either an aphrodisiac um some of them specifically said they are to activate the libido um so let me just go over those and again um i probably am pronouncing some of these wrong so maybe what i will do is later on today is um go in and type them in there for you because I didn't put them on the list of things that you were going to need today because I didn't want anybody to freak out and be like, oh my God, she wants us to have all these things and I don't know what these things are and I don't have these things. And so I kept it pretty simple and easy uh, because that was that's how I would react if I saw a list of like a lot of things. I'd be like, oh my God, I don't have all those. What am I going to do? So I kept it real easy and um, I kept it to the things that I pretty much I would put in mine. And so... Um, those are, that's the reason I chose the ones I did is because the, those are the ones that I use in mine. Um, but the other things you could use in yours, and if you don't want to use them in yours, they're also, I said, like I said, you can buy these all as teas as well. Whether you get them loose herbs or in a tea bag already, these can be bought as teas. And so if you don't want to put them in your honey, you could also use them in actual tea and make tea or you could use the herbs on an incense burner or you could like I said make a room spray um, with them we'll probably do that at some point as one of the crafts is is make a spray um, I don't know what we'll make yet but we'll probably make something for a spray so you guys know how to do that yourselves as well anyway and again, I apologize because I'm probably not going to say all of these correctly. Um, one is um, 
and I think it's maca. I don't know. It's M-A-C-A. -A. It's a root. Um, it's a vegetable, um, but they use the, the root part is the part that um, you would be using. The root is um, supposed to be very sweet. So again, you could put it in the honey. You could make a tea with it. You could burn it on an incense, um, charcoal, whatever you want to do. But um, these are all items that will be either um, good for your uh, the libido, testosterone, um, aphrodisiac. I didn't write down what each one of them is. Maybe when I do the list, I'll put a little information about each one for you. Um, this one again, it's, I'm going to say tribulus. It's T-R-I-B-U-L-U-S. Um, it's also known as bindi and it's a plant. So it's probably going to be a leafy green herb kind of looking thing. Ginkgo biloba. Um, that's good because it's going to help increase blood flow. So got to have some blood flow. <laughs> uh, red ginseng. Um, it is good for um, this the sex honey that we're talking about. But I also wanted to put a little note in there because of myself. It's really good for um, menopausal symptoms. <laughs> So I might be buying some of that just because of that. Um, fenugreek, and again, I don't know if I'm saying it right, but it's F-E-N-U-G-R-E-E-K. Um, that is going to be in a seed form. And, oh, I put a little note on here. If you're on blood thinners, which I am not, but... I just wanted to put this out here. If anybody watching is on a blood thinner, this is not an herb for you. Okay? So, if you're if you're taking any type of blood thinner, do not use fenugreek. Um, the other one is saffron. I can't read my own writing again. Um Saffron, oh, it's going to be in a little spice form, so it's going to look more like the powdery. It's probably going to look more like a powder, saffron. And then the other one, which won't come in the tea, and I don't recommend putting it in your honey, but you can. Um, but another really good aphrodisiac is um, pistachio nuts. So you probably won't find that in a tea. Uh, you probably won't find that. Um, you could... You could get your own pistachios and um, put them in your mortar and pestle and crush them if you wanted. And you could put that maybe in your honey. Um, but I would just suggest getting one of these items in a tea and have a little um, tea and some pistachio nuts before you go to bed. <laughs> but like I said, you can certainly put any of those in the honey as well if you want. And... Um, I'm not going to take my notebook with me today, so I'm going to just take a picture of that real quick so I remember to put that list up on there for you today. I have to take pictures of things because that's the only way I remember to do things. All right. All right, so I've taken a picture of that, so I will get that list up there for you. Um, if you want, I can actually just put the links to the teas on Amazon, if that's helpful. I don't mind doing that. Okay. So, get my little jar back here. Put the camera back down for just a second. So, you can see all my herbs and everything the rose petals, the lavender, the cardamom is all in there. And like I said, my honey is, I don't even know if I'm going to get this open. <clears throat> I may have to do this later. Oh, there it goes. Oops. Now I've got honey on my shirt. Oh, well. It's a messy job. 
All right, and my honey, like I said, is very thick. It, it, it will pour, but it's gonna pour very slowly, and I don't want to bore you guys with sitting here for four hours waiting for my honey to pour. <laughs> so that's why I have a little spoon. And I'm just gonna go ahead and add. Yeah, it's really thick. <laughs> that's okay. My reminder that I have to go to work, that I have a muggle job I have to go to. Some days I wish, this had nothing to do with sex honey, but some days I wish I lived in a time where I had a farmhouse and I grew all my own herbs and had my own bees and had my own livestock. And there was no electric bill to pay and no internet. <laughs> and you didn't need to see that. I looked at my spoon. <laughs> all right, it's not going to stay there. Um, and I didn't have to go to work besides get up and take care of my own property. Go out and get my own herbs, my vegetables, work in my garden, feed my livestock. But if that happened, then I wouldn't be able to come see all of you guys every day. So, all right, so I'm just gonna mix that in as best I can. Again, like I said, mine is really thick. And the honey I just added to it is really thick. So um, I just try to mix the herbs in there so that they're all mixed. They do tend to float to the top, even though it's really thick. Um, a lot of times I go back to the jar and you can see where they're all lined up right here around the top. So even though it's really thick, they do um, kind of go back to the top. So I just try to smush it all back down. And every time I use this, I try to mix it up. But um, again, it still does go back up to the top. So, baby one. Um, so now our honey is all made. It was really easy. Uh, it was fun. I enjoyed being here with you guys. But now you guys are going to be like, okay, so now I've made my honey. What am I supposed to do with it? <laughs> well, possibilities are kind of endless. Um, but I'll give you a few suggestions. You can certainly, if you so choose, bring that right into the bedroom and use it however you want. <laughs> but the way I use it is I actually just every day, I should have left the camera down. I just pick up my little wand there and let it drip off. And take a little bit. So that's how I use it. Just a little bit every day. It's really easy. The other thing you can do is you can certainly mix it in your tea. So if you wanted to, again, buy one of those that I just listed off in a tea form. So say you got some, I don't know. I can't even think of what I just wrote down there. They're, they all come in teas, I checked. There was one I think was um, the one I'm going to actually order on Amazon. Is I think the red ginseng. There was a tea that was red ginseng and cardamom. But I will see if I can find that again. So I think that's the tea I'm going to order. And then with your tea, you could just put a spoonful of the honey in your tea. 
if you wanted to do that. Um, your honey is not going to burn on a charcoal disc. It's going to smoke in not, it's more like going to burn than, um, than like when you burn an incense and it actually smokes and it's going to, it, it's not the same. You can try it if you want. Um, but it's not the same. It's, it smells like burnt something burning, like bad burning, not like <laughs> a nice incense smell burning. Um, if you want to burn something on your incense, you can use all of those herbs that you haven't. Like if I wanted to burn something on my incense, um, I would just take the, the packets and burn them on the incense without the honey. Um, but sorry, I'm out of focus here for some reason. But the honey, again, like I said, you can take it right into the bedroom and use it however you choose in there. Or you can just take a little bit every day. Um, like I said, you can just either spoon or I use the little wand thing in here. I just pick it up and as it's dripping down, I just kind of catch some. And you can see the herbs are, uh, probably not in the camera. You can kind of see the herbs dripping down with it as well. See how the herbs are all on there. I'll put my cover back on. And that just sits right here all the time. It sits right on my desk, right here. And I do my best to remember every day to use a little bit. So you can incorporate it into, um, you know, if you sit down in the morning Make yourself a cup of tea, um, put some of your honey in it, do a little smudge, make it a little morning ritual. Or it'd also be great to do in the evening when you get home from work. You know, you could make yourself a cup of tea with the honey and smudge, clear everything off from the day and um, start your evening off that way. So again, really no right or wrong way. Um, you could eat the whole jar of honey if you wanted to stay, but you're probably going to have a uh, yucky belly if you do that. <laughs> so again, pretty easy. But if you got any questions um, or you got some just suggestions that you would like to add, um, you could certainly, um, I didn't do it, but if you wanted to, you could certainly add... Um, some stones in there if you wanted. You could put a little piece of quartz in there if you wanted. Um, it's gonna sink to the bottom, so and you don't have to worry about eating it. It will sink to the bottom. Um, you could put some carnelian in there. I don't think I have a piece handy. Um, I don't. Um, but you could put some carnelian in there. Um, you know, those would be my first two suggestions. You could put some rose quartz in there if you wanted. Um, rose quartz is more of a general um, overall love but you could certainly put a piece in there if you wanted if you're working more on the um, creative passion side um, that would be um, more of a carnelian stone but it's up to you like I said make it your own if there's something that represents um, creativity desire for you um, put that in there if it's edible. Um, I know the, the stones aren't edible, but those will sink to the bottom and um, it, that won't bother you. Um, but if there's other things that you want to put in there that are edible, certainly go ahead and do that. If you're not sure if you can put it in there or not, like I said, um, to me, if it's coming to you, it's coming to you for a reason to be put in there. Um, but there are certain things that you... Um, wouldn't want to put in there for stones because some of them will break down. Um, there are stones that um, have things in there that are not good for you to ingest, types of metals that are not good for you to ingest. But um, you'd be safe with rose quartz, quartz, um, carnelian. Those would be safe to put in there. Um, but yeah, just ask if you've got any questions. You can put essential oils in there as well. Um, if in a small amount, um, I don't choose to ingest 
essential oils. Um, a lot of people do though and don't have any issues with it. Um, I mean, I use a mouthwash that's an essential oil based mouthwash. Same with my toothpaste. They're essential oils and I use those and I don't have any problems, but I don't swallow those. Um, but you can put a small amount of essential oils in there if you want. But, you know, if there's an essential oil that you want in there, there's an herb that goes with it. So I would suggest going with the herb before the essential oil. But that's just a personal preference for me. But if you are somebody who ingests oils and doesn't have an issue with that, um, you could certainly put essential oils in there. Um, they're going to separate a little bit. Um, so you're going to have to stir it. But I have I stir mine every time I use it anyway just to get the herbs mixed in there because, like I said, they do float to the top even though it's so thick. But. All right. That's it for me today. Uh, let's see here. Just a reminder, we have um, Mercury going retrograde on Sunday. So um, we did this on the forecast this week already. But just as a recap, if you've got anything for papers that need to be signed, contracts that need to be signed, important documents that need to be signed, anything like that, Make sure you get them done by um, Saturday because Mercury is going retrograde on Sunday and it's going to be in retrograde all the way till March 9th. So um, I highly suggest you don't sign any contracts or make any really big decisions in that time frame. So if you've got something that you want to take care of, um, make sure you take care of it by Saturday. Um, and I do have a couple of little things that are going to be coming up for you for Mercury Retrograde. Um, at least I think I do. I will check. A lot of times I schedule the posts on throughout the week. But um, sometimes I just see things and put them in the group as well. Because I think they're interesting or relevant. But um, yes. So Mercury is going Retrograde on Sunday. And uh, so... Get anything done you need to get done for business-wise, paperwork, contracts, legal stuff, anything like that. Make sure you got it done by Saturday. All right. And I grabbed my book here to see what next Thursday was. Next Thursday, we are going to be working on the root chakra. So last month, we did the Earth Star Chakra, and I tried to get it all in one video, and I felt like it was really rushed in kind of crammed in there and I kind of felt like I had to just keep going to make sure I got everything in there for you. So what I'm going to do this month and we'll see how that goes is on next Thursday on the 20th, we're going to talk about the root star, um, the root chakra. And then on the 27th, we're going to talk about the, the herbs, the oils, the gemstones and everything that would be, um, related to working with the root star chakra going into february uh, going into march if possible i would like to talk about the chakra at the beginning of the month so that you can have the whole month to kind of understand what you're working on because when we talk about the root chakra now it's going to be on the 20th so that the month is almost done especially since february is a short month um, but I did really want to get in the love jar and the sex honey before Valentine's Day. So that's why I did kind of push it off. But in March, I'm going to try to talk about the chakra more towards the beginning of the month. Um, and then um, we'll be having um, something for Astera coming in as well. So all those things will be coming up for us. Um, and yeah, I think that's all I have for you today. Like I said, if you have any questions, any comments, go ahead and put them in there or you can private message me. I don't mind. Um, I try to answer them as soon as I can throughout the day. And <clears throat> remember to be kind. Your kindness not only is going to improve your day, it's going to improve the other person's day and potentially could change their life. Um, and it spreads. You know, when you're kind to somebody and then they turn around and they're kind to somebody and then they turn around and they're kind to somebody and... Um, you started that that chain effect so 
something you can um, be proud about, feel good about. So on that note, I am going to go to work and do my muggle job and then go do muggle grocery shopping and then come home and do muggle supper. <laughs> so I hope everybody has a great day. Have a great weekend. Um, I'm going to try to kind of stay in. It's supposed to be cold and yucky and snowy. So we'll see if that happens. And I will see you guys all on Monday morning at 730 for our uh, weekly forecast. Have an awesome weekend. Love you guys. Bye.